uh, hey guys this is Narayan and, and I welcome all the viewers in this video and my youtube channel as well so guys in this video I'm just going to talk about the second uh, lesson you, uh, you can say the 12th lesson in this network n plus comtia certification volume and this is volume 2 in this this one will be your second but if you count from the volume 1 chapter 1 or lesson 1 this will be 12th and in this the main concept of this lesson is to understand remote networking okay so in this video i have couple of topics like uh, the very first one is topic a which is network uh, remote network architecture okay next one is topic b which is terminal service implementations topic c is remote access networking implementations and topic d virtual private networking so we will understand all the topics one by one in this video and if you want to access the previous videos what i have uploaded till now uh, from volume 1 or from chapter 1 to chapter 11 and uh, volume 1 to volume 2 you can subscribe my channel and this is the url of my channel and from there you can go through all the videos and if you are finding or if you feel it is helpful please don't forget to share comment like and uh, subscribe my youtube channel so let me begin with the very first one uh, so guys the objective is like very simple uh, or you can say the objectives of uh, this lesson so you should be able to identify major architectures in uh, remote networking implementation common internal services network implementation component of remote access networking implementations and major component of uh, vpn implementations so we will go one by one in this video so now uh, the very first topic which is topic a network you can say or you can see here like uh, uh, remote network architecture so what do you mean by so first of all we need to understand what is remote networking here okay so remote networking is a type of network communication that enables users to access resources that are not at their physical location so the meaning and the concept of remote networking is clear just it is a situation where the resources are not in front of the computer or your physical computer but you need to access and you are accessing and that is happening because of that networking between two remote devices or locations okay and the data is not physically available at your physical computer or at that particular computer that is known as remote networking and the remote computer uses a, an established connection mechanism to attach to the network and for that we need to have couple of uh, you know mechanism to use to access those data or resources and that is possible through networking only so guys remote, uh, remote networking limitations so we have couple of uh, limitations also like it is good to have that kind of uh, remote networking so that we do not need to physically visit that location and uh, get the data but yes if one thing has good thing definitely it will have bad also so there is there are certain limitations we will understand the biggest limit to remote networking or network is the connection bandwidth dial-up connections are common but supports exist uh, for ISDN, D uh, DSL and uh, other higher speed connections if the service is available to the remote users. So the biggest uh, you can say the limitation is like bandwidth. Oh, okay. So if you want a higher speed access of your resources then you need to take higher speed connection and we will understand in this one by one all those things. So this is what the concept of uh, a remote networking here okay for example this is your remote access server and uh, this is your internal network or you can say resources are kept this side and remote computer one remote user is setting this side so you have to uh, establish a proper communication then only you can access okay so for that you need to take one modem this side one connection from isp this side okay uh, this is your ISP from internet uh, you need to take connection one modem is connect, connect, connected and this will this request will go to ISP only from from this ISP it will 
go to this modem that user is running this site so this is like india and this is like uh, you can say usa or other country like that i'm just giving you example or you, you can feel like it is a uh, mumbai or this is a bangalore this is what the remote networking we can establish and for that we need to take pst pstn connection and there are a couple of uh, uh, services we have and we can take from ISPs and we can establish uh, networking between two remote locations so this is known as established connection mechanism okay we require two modems and uh, there are a couple of devices I will tell you in the couple uh, coming uh, slides so first of all remote access service servers so as I told you here we required one remote access server so what is this actually so remote access services or remote access uh, services server RAS are available from many sources Microsoft implementation is called if we talk about the Microsoft uh, operating system like uh, servers so they have one uh, we can use this one uh, routing and remote access services which is also known as RRAS and we can establish this kind of networking on Microsoft networks using RRAS instead of high uh, other third-party remote access servers means that the user can dial in and authenticate with the same account he or she uses at the office so we do not need to have separate user account and all but if you are using third party then we would require different username and password for that okay so with third party remote access servers there must be some mechanism in place to synchronize the username and password so that is what i was talking about now uh, vendors if we talk about uh, remote access service servers so we have couple of vendors like Microsoft as I told you it was uh, included in Windows anti server 4.0 then Windows 2000 servers and Windows server 2003 and still it is available on Windows whatever the version is coming because it is a very important uh, uh, service we required and third party we talk about so we have like uh, Perl okay citrix and uh, Python. so these are the third party uh, remote access servers available if we want to go for th that kind of third party next one is how to configure it so guys it is very uh, simple and if you want to see you can uh, access my I mean as I told you you can subscribe my channel you and you can find I have uploaded couple of videos how to conf configure these things so this is just a graphic here I took like uh, you need to go to routing and remote access then uh, administrative tools routing uh, remote and uh, routing and remote access then you need to select property okay this is just uh, you can say configuring uh, your computer to act as a dial up dial up uh, RAS server so if you want to configure you can configure you need to go to property then you need to uh, uh, put certain things like uh, you need to go to general tab check remote access server and click OK okay inside this like this remote access server routes local area LAN or what then restart we need to restart it and uh, once again we need to verify dial-up uh, connections for that we need to go to port here okay select port several access uh, there will be a couple of uh, ports we will be seeing here okay this is like point to point PP or these are the multiple things you can you will find from here and you need to verify first of all RAS modem port has been enabled or not so if it is enabled we do not need to do anything if we it is not enabled then we need to enable here okay now next one is remote control networking how we can control this networking so remote control uses a special software package that enables a remote client to take over a host computer on the network okay once connected the remote client can send keyboard and mouse data and device uh, and receive screen information however all jobs processing and execution happens on the host computer I think you may not understand here let me show you one graphic here let me tell you a couple of things here so remote control solutions remote control networking solution includes like Windows remote desktop and remote access assistance semantic uh, PC anywhere uh, go to my PC uh, log me in and Bevex uh, access anywhere so these are solutions for remote access control 
and we talk about little bit more here so remote control can be deployed across van links or on local network many companies use it as a helpless solution providing technician with access to user machines without leaving the help desk okay so let me give you one uh, example here so this is what one client host here okay host client basically so host client should be dedicated machine it should be one dedicated machine and once again we have a remote client here and he is trying to access resources from this side so he will be handling all the requests from this client now similarly we have what it is actually this host client so I told you here I think once connected the remote client can send keyboard and mouse data and receive screen information however all your processing execution happens on the host so whatever it is like processing on processing and all will happen here only now next one is uh, terminal services so what is what do you mean by terminal services so guys terminal services are included in a special server software package built in uh, will to establish virtual session that uh, emulate a remote host so it is basically why we used to establish virtual sessions okay a client log on to a server start a session and appears to the host as a remote terminal the main advantage of terminal services to is that one host can support multiple sessions so for if, if you need to have multiple sessions to that particular host single host you can go for terminal services so this is a very simple example here we need to deploy one terminal server here and if you wish to have session 1 session 2 session 3 we can get through this terminal services so client 1 can access at a time client 2 can access client 3 can access so multiple uh, session can be established and for that we require I mean this modem bank we, we would require a couple of modems here mm -hmm. next one is so here the topic one is completed the next topic is topic B which is terminal services implementation so we spoke about terminal services so how we can implement these services now so first of all we require thin clients okay so what is the, what what is thin client so a thin client is any machine that uses a thin client protocol to connect to a server in order to access and run the applications okay so let me take you through this one uh, we'll understand a couple of things here and when a thin client connects to application server it is start a session that em uh, emulates a complete PC environment that has allocated memory and CPU resources so guys the meaning is very simple uh, let me tell you a little bit more thing here I will tell you I will I will tell you more about it okay the session appears to the client to be working Windows desktop in which the client can run and shut down software and run several applications at once so let me give you one example here so that it will be easy to understand so guys here these are the thin client okay thin clients like client 1 client 2 and this is application server and this is what session session 2 it is it is just emulates a complete a computing environment if we use thin client so how how it works hardware for thin client can range from the uh, minimal component found in the dedicated thin client machine to standard workstations so next one is thin client can also use different operating systems such as unix and windows xp or windows professional or even no no operating system at all so guys this one you, you can see little bit thing here okay pc running thin client software has more hardware and an os installed and dedicated thin client has minimal hardware and no os installed so this is the difference between one uh, you can say uh, dedicated thin client and PC running thin client okay next one is thin client component so what are the component in thin, thin client so input devices usually keyboard and mouse we required and output devices usually a monitor and network connection thin client software so they will not have much like uh, hardware I mean other hardware like processor or something something like that uh, whatever we have in a com system complete system 
okay so they, they just need to have one keyboard and mouse and monitor now next one microsoft thin uh, terminal services let me talk about so microsoft's thin client application server is installed and it, it is called like uh, terminal server it is available on windows nt servers 2000 2003 and later on version also all versions include application mode which allow user to run application on the servers and uh, server 2003 also offer administration mode which provide fear uh, fewer connections and less functionality but does not require to purchase or does not require the purchase of licenses so this is what i'm talking about this microsoft terminal services again we need to deploy one server here okay and this is uh, like 2000 professional and this is windows xp so they will get uh, we do not require license to purchase for the, the, these clients next one is web based remote access so with the advent of global business and uh, the internet immense popularity providing access to services and data via web browsers is substantially substantially a part of uh, remote access and uh, the main benefit of uh, properly deployed web based service is that uh, a client doesn't need to a special need to have a special software installed to access web based applications and data so the concept of the concept is very simple here sometimes it's very a uh, little bit difficult to you know understand theoretically so always i try to uh, take one example so it becomes very easy and uh, let me tell you what it is actually so this is a web based remote remote access guys here we have one web server hosted application and this server is holding or uh, i mean hosting couple of applications okay and this is terminal server enable remote administration okay and we have remote user access application by a web browser and one user is sitting here and remote administrator manage application servers by a web server so we have one more administrator who is accessing this server remotely through web so that is the main concept of uh, web based remote access i can access this server from different location like uh, using some url and all so that is the main uh, basic concept of web based remote access next one is web based access in windows so windows server 2003 and windows operating system uh, web based remote access is available through the remote uh, uh, desktop web connections and uh, the remote machines require only internet explorer 5 or higher version to access the way we are accessing google.com or whatever website we are accessing we are accessing through web based remote access only but we don't have administrative uh, this thing administration work but we are accessing through like that only because we don't know where those servers are kept and another web based access feature in windows server is called web interface for remote administration so if we want to configure we can install it by going to installing microsoft uh, terminal server so we need to go to install i mean first of all we need to install the control panel we need to add and remove programs windows component and then terminal server okay so these are the just basic steps here verify the full uh, security we need to uh, take couple of like full security or uh, release to security we need to select and then uh, just follow the next instructions we will get successful now uh, i will talk about the topic say which is remote access networking implementation okay so another popular uh, remote networking architecture is remote access networking in this uh, topic you will identify the component commonly used in remote access networking implementations so guys first one is like uh, remote access protocol we require this what kind of protocol we are using uh, for remote access so in this what it, it is actually so remote access protocol is a type of protocol that enables users to log on to a computer or network within an organization from an external locations and uh, remote access protocol can provide uh, direct dial up connections by modems or they can provide connections by a isp and the internet 
so they will take care of uh, those kinds kind of activities uh, during that remote access and uh, this is the simple example of uh, remote access protocol so remote access protocol client configured for dial-up okay and server configured to receive dial-up connections so this is done by the protocols only now let me go to next one which is uh, serial line internet protocol so this is one of the protocol you can say uh, we need to configure I think in my one of my slide I had uh, taken one snap in that it was reflecting couple of uh, this thing okay like uh, we need to select these things so somewhere it will come protocol also and uh, we need to I'm not going in depth this just giving you basic idea we need to select for, for that tunneling or uh, that secure communication okay so slip which is known as a serial line internet protocol so it is a is a legacy remote access protocol used for sending IP uh, uh, byte streams over serial lines such as modem phone connections and all with slip transmissions transmissions both ends of the communication channel need to convert data uh, to and from IP datagrams slip has been used with unix based system one, uh, since uh, 1984 and uh, we have next one is p2p point to point protocol point to point protocol in this is a current internet standard for sending uh, ip datagrams packets over serial point to point link and it can be uh, used in synchronous and asynchronous connections it supports the use of uh, net b e u i i p i p x and apple talk network protocols by encapsulating data with the network control protocol ncp next one is uh, p triple p o e which is also known as a point to point protocol over ethernet okay is a standard uh, that provides uh, the feature and uh, functionality of uh, point to point and dsl or cable modem connections that use ethernet to transfer signals from the carriers to the client okay so these are the protocols we need to configure in this kind of and the next one is extensible authentication protocol so extensible uh, authentication protocol is an extension of triple uh, p point to point connection that provides support for additional authentication methods such as token smart cards certificate and so forth so this is what remote access authentication happens okay this remote user identifies a dial-up connection it is initiating this remote client dials a remote access server okay remote server answers the call it answered now request for client authentication and agreement is sent agreement to send okay now there will be one agreement and connection established authentication credentials requested received and accepted so once it is done they will be having that complete access or they can access the resources after that authentication is done now next one is guys uh, uh, which is PAP password authentication protocol very important protocol for remote access so what happened in this in this password authentication protocol PAP is authentication method that sends client IDs and password as clear text okay this is the you can say uh, specialty of this PAP protocol it is generally used uh, when a remote client is connecting to non windows point to point server that does not support password encryption so for example if you have one side Linux and one side Windows in that condition this PAP will be utilized client identifies itself server request for verification client provides password and uh, we talk a little bit more about here when the server receives a client ID and password pairs it compares them to its local list of uh, credentials so this server will be having one database in that all the credentials for all the users uh, and once that request comes from them 
I mean from client it will check whether it is having the same or not if it is not then it will not allow that client to establish connection if it is if it is matching then it will allow to establish the connection that is the main concept of this protocol next one is challenge handshake authentication protocol which is known as chap so what happens in this chap is a uh, encrypted uh, authentication method that enables connections from one encrypted authentication method the server requests so basically chap was developed so that the password would not have to be sent in plain text it is generally used to uh, connect to non microsoft servers so in that they had avoided uh, the sending password through plain text okay chap uses a combination of md5 hashing and uh, challenge response mechanism and accomplishes authentication without uh, ever be uh, ever sending password over the network so let me give you one example here this is chap okay what is happening here login request is coming from client and it is challenging show me your credentials and all it is responding okay this is what i have and once it is matching it will log on accepted this is the concept of uh, challenge handshake authentication protocol next one is ms chap and ms chap version 2 so these are the just version version as you know if we have older thing it has less features or functionality or services when next version comes it it supports or it provides better than what we had in earlier version so that is the difference main difference between ms chap and ms chap version 2 so ms chap is a microsoft extension of chap that is especially designed for authenticating remote server remote windows workstations and ms chap version 2 provides all the functionality of ms chap in addition to additional uh, features, security, security features such as two-way authentication or a strong, a stronger encryption keys. So these are the basic difference between we have versions of something like that. So this is what remote client uh, request connection and remote server sends a random value as a challenge and uh, then uh, client encrypts challenge with its password and send the result and then the server verifies the response and allow access to the resources that is known as the challenge response process next one is guys we have one more uh, uh, you can say service here or you can say the facility here for authentication which is remote authentication dial in user service which is also known as radius we are very important and i have uploaded one video how to configure it in windows server 2016 so remote authentication dial in user service provides a standardized centralized authentication of remote users when a network contains several remote uh, access servers you can configure one the one of the server to be radius server and all the servers of the or uh, as a radius client so what will happen here the radius client will pass all the authentication requests to radius server for verification okay user configuration remote access policy and usage uh, login can be centralized on the radius server so this is what uh, can be done for the authentication we can deploy a radius server and uh, let me tell you this is a one very simple example here we have one uh, radius server here okay and radius server accepts all the accepts and process all the authentication requests for example i have two clients here okay these are the clients and these are the radius clients so if any request is coming from this side these clients will forward for verification to radius server and these are the radius client not radius server now this is how we can implement uh, we need to just uh, uh, go to once again uh, routing in remote access we need to first of all install and for the, after that we need to go to you know same thing like uh, uh, property of uh, your uh, uh, routing and remote access then select security authentication method examine the uh, then click and these are the protocol what i'm talking about as of now which protocol we want to use and uh, install authentication like this networking services 
so guys here uh, topic C is also completed now I will be talking about uh, topic D if you want how to one figure guys you can subscribe and you can find in my channel itself there are lots of videos I have uploaded how to one figure those things and now moving to the next topic which is virtual private networking so what happens in this virtual private networking so guys in the last topic we identified remote access networking uh, components and implementations now in some organization the C number of remote users uh, makes the implementation of uh, traditional remote access networking cost prohibited prohibitive uh, this is where VPN comes into the picture okay if uh, if we are uh, worrying about cost and also we can go for VPN which is known as virtual private network in this topic we will understand component and implementation so first of all for that we require one tunnel link so VPN itself is a tunnel link we need to create one tunnel separate tunnel dedicated tunnel for that communication for that data transmission so it provide higher security for authentication for encryption and all so tunneling is a data transport technique in which a data packets from one protocol called passenger protocol is transferred inside the frame or packet of another protocol called carrier protocol so that is why it is uh, highly secured okay one passenger protocol next one is the uh, carrier protocol in that uh, that data will be traveling through the, those two protocols this enables data from one network to pass from one endpoint of a tunnel to another through the infrastructure of another network so it is just you can say you can say, you can say the communication between two separate organization through one dedicated link one dedicated line which is known as tunneling and the carrier protocol can encapsulate and route non-routable uh, passenger protocol or it can provide additional security by hiding passenger data from the carrier network so let me tell you what is tunneling exactly so this is what the basic concept of tunneling for example I have one organization this side okay this is my one network and this is one network so what is happening here uh, IP data encapsulated okay passenger protocol enters the network and uh, this is carrier protocol IP moves the network and passenger protocol leaves the network IP data unencapsulated so it is happening through this tunnel only there is a separate connection between both the computer you can say for example both the organizations so this is how that the, the, the session or that the data transmission is very secured highly secured now VPN this is just tunneling okay and now we will see what is VPN here so VPN is a virtual private network is private network that is configured by tunneling through a public network such as internet so we need to take that kind of connection from ISPs uh, they will provide us the dedicated connections and VPN provides secure connection between endpoints such as routers clients or servers by using tunneling to encap encapsulate the encrypt and encrypt the data a special VPN protocol are required for that like uh, I told you if we need to create any VPN tunneling we require certain protocols security for that also for encryption okay so this is a just basic uh, example of uh, VPN private network so I have my private network here so I need VPN endpoint here this one VPN endpoint I required one VPN endpoint here also and this is also private network then here also this is also VPN endpoint so like this we can connect through public network so one two three four all are connected through VPN that is a concept of VPN which is private network and for that we required every side endpoint VPN device this is VPN protocol we need to have so as you can see here uh, this is VPN protocol we are talking about okay so uh, so here what we can see uh, this is ISP one side okay and we required one device which is known as CSU DSU what is CSU DSU T1 and all I have 
prepared one separate video about all those things in my previous videos if you want to understand you can just go through and search my name itself it will come somewhere so tunneling protocol secure the path the main main role of protocol is to just secure the path make secure a uh, line or tunnel okay an encryption protocol secured the data the main concept of encryption is to just modify the format of the data while traveling so it is done by the encryption protocols and tunneling protocol will make that path secure and here encryption protocol if we talk about the encryption protocol secure the data on vpn server so this is how all the protocols for encryption tunneling and uh, de decryption uh, work uh, and play their own role throughout this communication now uh, vpn advantages what are the advantages of vpn so the very first one is like uh, is cost the cost uh, to maintain a vpn is generally lower than uh, other uh, uh, remote access technologies and uh, if we talk about next one is point to point tunneling protocol okay so we will have to use certain protocols for uh, this connection so if we go for p uh, p atp which is point to point tunneling so we'll understand what it is actually so point to point tunneling protocol is microsoft vpn uh, protocol that increases the security of point to point uh, protocol providing tunneling and data encryption for point to point protocol packets it uses the same authentication type as uh, triple p and is the most widely supported vpn method among older windows client the next one is guys l2 tp which is layer 2 tunneling protocol so layer 2 tunneling protocol is an internet standard protocol for tunneling uh, triple p session across a variety of network protocols such as ip frame relay or uh, atm if you have this kind of infrastructure then we can go for l2 TP protocol and L2TP was especially designed to provide tunneling and security interoperability for client to gateway and gateway to gateway connections. Okay. Next uh, VPN type. So we have three types of VPN. Basically, the first one is access VPN, second is intra VPN, and the third one is extranet VPN. Okay. So I hope you understand what is this access VPN means provide remote access to single users okay dial up isdn dsl cable connections and if we talk about intranet so connections uh, of a network such as remote office or uh, uh, or corporate office or headquarters something like that and if we talk about extranet vpn connects building to different companies to organizations for sharing uh, resources and all okay and we can see couple of things here vpn can also be classified by their implementation so we can have like uh, hardware based vpn or we can have firewall based vpn and we can have software based vpn okay usually uh, we talk about hardware so usually use encrypting routers and if we talk about firewall we use a firewall security mechanism uh, and if we talk about software base so can be used when the vpn endpoints are not controlled by the same organizations so this is just a small example here of uh, an access vpn okay and uh, here you can see we have one remote client this side and isp and vpn router and my main office is here so provide hardware vpn hardware based vpn here so I can access my main office through this VPN by using this tunnel. So this is called an access VPN. Similarly, we have two more, which is internet VPN. So in this, what we can do? This is a scenario. Once again, this is my internet office, okay, remote office, and I need one VPN router here and one VPN router here also. So I my both the offices are connected through this VPN connection, and this connection is very secure. It is known as intranet inside my organization only. For that, I require two VPN routers both the sides. Similarly, I will tell about the next one, which is an extranet VPN. So in this, 
Since scenario will be I have A company this side and I will have B company this side that is known as extranet and I want to communicate with both the organizations okay so for that at both the end I need to have one VPN routers and if you see this is my intranet connect, uh, main office and this is also intranet so you can say this is my B company only but I want to talk to extranet this is partner company so I will have to have VPN router and will have to use the same sort of policies or uh, I mean whatever parameters I'm using this side I should match and the, those parameters should match that side also then only this connection can be established and that is known as extranet VPN connections so guys in this video this much only and uh, I hope this video is uh, helpful for you and uh, thanks for watching for this video comment on this video like this video share this video and subscribe my youtube channel and uh, I think in this video this much only and this is complete lesson 12 and if you want to have more updated videos so please don't don't forget to subscribe channel and in next uh, video I will be talking about lesson 13 which is disaster recovery so again it will have a couple of topics like uh, topic A planning for disaster recovery data backup fault tolerance methods so I will be talking about all those things in coming coming up videos and if you subscribe then uh, definitely you will be getting notifications and uh, till then bye bye